Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Tactical Friday. You heard from her this past Monday, and I am honored to be welcoming Danielle Mulvey back to the show as we unpack her five-star employee rating system. Danielle, welcome back. I'm so excited we get to dive in deep and get tactical today. You know, this is honestly my favorite part of the show. I love being able to hear the story, the passion that we heard from you on Monday. But then this portion lets us get to the nitty gritty because this is something that you have a great system. It's something that a lot of people really need. You have a really easy way to get it as you're driving in the car or listening. I literally did it real quick myself. And um, it's just an awesome capability for you. So I'm going to just turn the mic over. Tell us, what is that five-star employee rating system? And give us a good description of what that looks like for us to be able to employ it ourselves. Yeah. So, I mean, the the whole point is, is that we don't want to settle for less than five-star employees. And a five-star employee represents the top 15% of available talent at the given market rate. So, you know, if, if the job pays $50,000, you don't pay someone who you think is a five-star employee $60,000. It is at the given rate. And, um, and so statistically, that means one out of seven candidates is a potential five-star employee. So it's about casting a wide net and filtering out the one, two, and three-star candidates. You never want to settle for less than five stars. You don't want to be tempted for someone that you think, well, maybe they can do it or they say they can do it. And the five-star employee rating system takes you through a process to rate the candidates on five criteria that at the end, if all five stars are filled out, ta-da, you have a five-star employee. But but you know, remember that if you have seven candidates, six of them should filter out in this five-star rating system um, so that you only have that one five-star employee left. So, so it's a numbers game again, like you need 21 applicants to net three potential five-star finalists in your, in your, in your recruitment and hiring process. So let's dive into, uh, into the, each of the stars. So the first star is core value alignment. And, you know, most entrepreneurs think, I mean, if I could just clone myself, uh, that's, that's all I need. I need 10 of me. And the, the, the best way to clone yourself is to hire people who have the same DNA who have the same core values. They share the core values that you have. And what's what's important about distinguishing about the core values is these are your, the business owner's true core values. Um, this is not a group think exercise. You know, most people that we've taken through this process about their core values, you know, they're like, oh, we have core values. And we're like, okay, can you just do this 20 minute exercise with us and 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 just confirm it? And when they go through that exercise, they're like, oh my gosh, like, no, these values that we've been talking about are aspirational values, meaning, you know, we'd like to get there, but they're not true 100% of the time. So what's really important is that your core values that you put down, these are the three to five things that are true core values 100% of the time. And then what's important is you have a clarifying statement for exactly what that core value means, why, why it's important and, and, and really define it. You got to get real specific. And, and through this five-star employee rating system, we, we, we are taking you through a process to get real specific and real intentional about what you need, what you want, and what you don't want in, in, in a candidate for each given role. So, so, so there's aspects of the five-star employee rating system that you customize per role. Um, because, uh, let's say you, you have an organization and, um, and, 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 you have, let's say an advertising and marketing firm, um, you know, you need someone who has creativity to be a graphic designer, but you don't need creativity from your accounting department or your bookkeeper. Right. So, so, so you'll decide what you need and what you don't need for, for the specific roles. So then the second criteria, so before we hit the oh, second sure. criteria, I'm actually curious about that piece because and you you were touching on it but with core values core values can mean a lot of things to a lot of people mm -hmm. and even from Monday's episode when we were talking about um your dad liking the guy because he wore a polo and jeans and he was an athlete that could be seen to some as a core quote unquote value right I think that's something that maybe the definition of core values isn't quite 
in a line. Yeah. So, 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 so there's a, there's an exercise that we, that we take people through and, you know, like, you know, we give you four minutes to write down every value on there. And then when you go through that, that, that exercise, then we have you go back through and we have you label the value, either core aspirational, accidental, um, and, and so then that sort of starts to filter, filter things yeah. out and, and you start to prioritize and, and really uncover what your three to five true, true core values are. And, and I love that piece. I, I'm glad you explained that because that's something that once you actually understand that in business, that applies to employees, hiring, retention, employee experience, but also the customer side. Once you have and understand those core values that you have intrinsically in your own business, like we talked about my company being named after myself, right? It's not because I wanted to have my name on a billboard, but as a knight, there are core values attached to being a knight, both last name and um, a traditional, like a knight of the round table, right? There are core values attached to the two that I want to project in what I'm doing, especially with a security firm. So it made, made sense in a lot of ways to project that. And I feel, I feel like a lot of people don't quite see that, right? They don't quite get that conversion piece of that core value where yeah, you and, really and drive forward on that. You're you're exactly right. So, you know, when you, and, and, and when you define these, when you figure out where your three to five true core values are and you define them with clarifying statements, you put them in your job posting because that is going to be one of your tactics for attracting five-star candidates and repelling the one and two and three-star candidates who are like, oh, this is a little hardcore. Or this is a little serious or, you know, I, this, this isn't really me um, because this is the foundation. This is why this is the first star in the five-star employee rating system, because this is like, this is, this is, this is the DNA. And, um, and so if someone is aligned with your core values, they're going to think and act like you. And isn't that what we want as business owners is we want employees who are going to effectively think and act like us. And that's how we can successfully scale our business without frustration. It's when we hire people who don't share our core values and we're not aligned with our core values that those are the people that we're frustrated with because they just don't get it. And it's because they have, they're operating off of a different set of core values, which is fine. There's, there's a company out there for them, but um, yeah, this is, there's this that friction is, point there. And just like a client, you have those clients that are the same yeah. way. So identifying this on this end of it, not only will it help you internally, but it's going to help you externally, you and the employee externally focus on that, those core values with everything you're doing in business. Yeah, you're exactly right. It, 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 then it, then it, then it comes full circle in terms of like the clients that you attract and, and the, and, and, and the best people to work with, because, you know, again, like we've all experienced, you know, no bueno clients, um, and, or, you know, nightmare clients. And, and when it comes down to it, there, there are people who didn't share our core values. Right. So, um, that's, 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 that's the secret, but that. we got four more. It is, it is. And that's going to tie into that fifth star. So I'm going to let you keep going. I'm sure. Okay. So then the second star, the second criteria are the 11 universal qualities of a five-star employee. So we've identified 11 universal qualities that should be present in all five-star employees. And, you know, not to get too deep in the, in the weeds here, but, but you're going to have a minimal acceptable rating for each of the 11 universal qualities in terms of what you need. Not every, not, not a five-star employee is not going to be a five in every one of these qualities, but what do you need them to be in terms of that quality? And what's interesting about these 11 qualities is that two are coded red, green, which means that they're relatively easy to change. So if someone, you know, if you're looking for someone, um, learning is, is one of the, um, one of the green qualities. And so if you have someone who just, you know, is, is kind of new to the industry, isn't dialed in, isn't plugged in, uh, you know, and they're, they're not demonstrating that, that they, that they know how to learn in the industry. Um, that's easy to change. You know, you, people don't know what they don't know. And, and as entrepreneurs, we tend to be like super consumers of content. So we just need to share with them and expose them to the things that we're, that we've been exposed to because of the circles that we run in. Um, and, and so, so, so that's something that's, that's relatively easy, easy to change. 
two of the 11 qualities are coded red. And these are like serious red flags. So if someone doesn't meet your minimum acceptable rating for one of these two uh, red criteria or qualities, then, you know, that's where they filter themselves out of, of competition and, and they don't move forward in your gauntlet. So the two red qualities are listen and uh, being limber. So uh, listen means being an active listener and, you know, using all of your senses to, to, to see and understand what's going on. Um, I had a candidate in March uh, that I was interviewing and it was during the screening interview. And this person had like passed two of our, two of our filters in our gauntlet and had gotten to the screening interview. And uh, I was about three and a half minutes into it. And I'm like, they're talking, but they're not answering the question. So then I'm like, okay, let me ask like simple, simple, get, 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 get more simple five and a half minutes, still not answering the question. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm sorry. Um, I just don't think this is going to be a great fit for us. And so I'll just, uh, thank you so much for applying and, you know, wish you the best. And that was it because boom, that red flag popped up. Uh, and then we talk about uh, limber. So small businesses, need employees who are limber. We don't use, I, I call it the F word. We don't use the F word um, as an employer. We don't use flexible because what an employee wants is, is flexibility, but, but it's different what they want versus what an employer needs, which is, which is being limber. So, you know, when an employee where well, I'm not even going to go down flexibility path, cause I think we all know what that means, but from an employer perspective, we need people who are limber. We need people who are amenable to change. We need people who, you know, don't mind switching shifts. Um, they're not rigid people. Uh, and, and so, so it's different than what employees are seeking flexibility. We need limber. Okay. We don't need flexible. We need limber. Does that make sense? And, and some people, you know, and there's lots of questions that you can ask to determine is someone of a fixed mindset is someone just too rigid and not limber because uh, trust me, no small business needs someone who who's, who's too rigid. Um, and, uh, and then the rest of the qualities are coded gray, which means that, you know, they can be improved upon, but it requires intention and coaching. So if you need someone, um, to, uh, you know, be a five and, and you're rating them a three, well, you can get them to a five, but you just have to know that you're going to have to coach them to get them to that, that five and, and it can happen, but you just have to go all in on helping them improve on, on that quality. So that's the second star. The third star are the aptitudes and skills for the role. So this is where you really get, you know, serious. You spend some time getting intentional. We have a list of over 25 aptitudes and we suggest that you, that there's nine to 13 aptitudes from that list that, um, that, that you determine, you know, this is what I need for this particular role. And then, um, and then you set a score to it and then you ask questions. So we've got some basic questions, but then, you know, it's important to design questions, um, specific to what you're looking for with regards to that aptitude and what you're not looking for, um, with, with regards to that aptitude and then, and then what skills do you need? And then it's important that, you know, through this process, you're testing their aptitudes and skills. So you're going to question it, but then you're also going to verify it by, by testing it as well. And then the fourth star in the five-star employee rating system is um, the success metrics for the role. So what you want to do here is you want to define three to five key responsibilities. And these key responsibilities should be what this employee is doing to help drive revenue. Um, and so then on those three to five key responsibilities, you're going to define what success looks like uh, with that responsibility by quantifying your a metric um, associated with what that success looks like in achieving and, and being fulfilling 
on that, on that key responsibility. So uh, you want to put a dollar sign, you want to put numbers, you want to put frequency. Um, but this is also really important too, because you're going to have your three to five key responsibilities on your job posting. Your job posting is going to be not your formal job description. So you still need that formal job description that has all the list of bullets, lift 25 pounds, all that fun stuff. But, but in your job posting, you're going to get real specific, real clear, real fast. And you're not going to look like the other job postings, as you mentioned the other day, that are just like copy and paste of someone else's vanilla job, job posting. Um, and, and, and by, by putting the three to five key responsibilities, by having the success metrics on those key responsibilities that are quantified with a dollar sign, um, numbers, percentages, that is going to attract the five-star candidate and repel the one, two, and three-star candidates. Because, you know, it's like, well, if I'm going to be held accountable, uh, I'm not so sure I can do that. I'm just going to hit this easy apply button and, and go with this peop these people who will just let me let me do what I want. Um, but a five-star employee who's really good at what they do, they're going to be like, yes, game on, bring it. I love it. Um, because, you know, people want to, if, they, if they're really good at something, they want to perform and excel and they want to know like, where's the bar set and, clarity. and, and meet like or exceed that bar. That's like a lot of clarity attached to that. That's what I'm hearing is like, if mm -hmm. I see that in a post and I'm like, Ooh, there's clarity attached to what my goal is. I don't have to have that ambiguity, which a lot of those copy and pastes have, and it leads to, I know how to succeed with this organization. Exactly. It's, um, you're, you're exactly right. You know, so for us, one, one of our businesses, we process long-term care claims and, you know, our success metrics are you're hitting 98% procedural uh, financial accuracy, 95% procedural accuracy, and you're processing 42 claims a day. Um, you know, the, the, you're, you're going to be measured and this is what you have to hit. Um, and so we talk about that and, and what's interesting, it, you know, in our process and stuff and, and we've, we've, we've had this business, um, since 2012. So, uh, you know, people who are perfectionists though, interestingly are not a good fit. So, you know, someone who thinks that they can get a hundred percent is, is not a right fit because everyone makes mistakes in, in, in this processing, even though we have checklists, there is, there's a bit of subjectivity and, and, and using some, some interpretation of, of claims language and such. Um, but, but it can't wreck someone's day when they get an error that they have to correct. Right. Um, so, 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 so we talk about that in, in the interview process as well. And, and I'm vetting in terms of their aptitude, you know, are, are they someone who is, is a perfectionist and, and like there, it, it's a fine line in terms of, you know, what you need in terms of, of perfectionist and, and a perfectionist, like for a pilot is a hundred percent of the time. Right. Um, like we talked about on Monday, uh, making sure that plane doesn't fall out of the sky, but you know, in some jobs, um, and, and actually I interviewed someone, um, who's, who had a music degree and she said, you know, one thing about being a musician is, is you're never perfect. And I was like, that's interesting. I didn't realize that cause I'm not musically inclined. Um, so, so, you know, everyone, everyone runs, runs differently. And so, you know, again, it's like getting real, real clear, real specific, real intentional about what you need, what you want and what you don't want. Yeah. I, I love that piece of it because it's, it goes back in as soon as you said the pilot, I'm like, yeah, that perfection is, is actually needed there for a lot of reasons. Um, but that's not necessarily the standard that we always hold people to in the rest of the business world, right? We don't necessarily highlight that as perfection because even we aren't perfect in our own business operations or our right. own conversations and how we do things. So that expectation would probably be uh, not met and lead to even more frustrations. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so then the fifth star in the employee rating system is return on payroll. And so, you know, this applies really to using the five-star employee rating system to rate your existing employees. So what I love about the five-star employee rating system is that you can use it on known talent, use it on your existing employees, go through the five-star rating system with maybe like some of your like worst hires who don't want no longer work for you. But if you take it through this process, you'd be like, oh my gosh, 
Like that was a hiring mistake. But if I would have taken them through this process, I would have never hired them. Oh my gosh. Um, so, so you use this system, you learn it by using it on your existing employees and rating them through the system. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your employees are producing a three X return on, on payroll. Um, ideally, if you can get to a 4X return on payroll, that would be great. So, you know, if an employee is getting paid $50,000 a year, they should be having $150,000 impact on, uh, on, on revenue. And, you know, this kind of ties also to, uh, to, to, to the, that four star, the success metrics. And so their three to five key responsibilities should be, you know, responsibilities that are contributing to, producing that three X return on, on payroll as well. Um, and, and that's how you really kind of also to, uh, you know, dial up, uh, your profitability when it comes to payroll, which is usually your biggest expense. And it, it all of a sudden becomes much more quantifiable for keeping employees or not keeping employees or making decisions based on that piece of it because of the amount of money attached to it. And I, I want to take the, the time to make sure everybody is able to get this. I know you have a phenomenally easy method for anybody listening attached to finding out more um, about everything you just talked about and everything you just unpacked for us. Can you give us the uh, the keys to the kingdom and how we get this? Uh, yeah, this so I know I, I know I ran through this pretty quickly and we only touched on uh, three of the 11 qualities. Um, so you can get all of the 11 qualities and, and, and get a step-by-step -step of, of the five-star employee rating system by texting never settle as one word, never settle to 411-321. That's never settle as one word to 411-321. And I grabbed it myself, uh, quick and easy to to snag, and it goes right to the inbox and is an awesome uh, PDF that outlines these different things. Definitely worth checking it out because I think there's a lot of information there that expands a little bit more, but also highlights a couple of areas where a continued conversation with you would, would really benefit a lot of organizations. Can you remind us the best way to have that conversation with you, whether it's on social yeah, media so or through your website? Yeah. So actually, um, my Calendly link, um, is, is in this, how to hire five-star employee guide. So if you, if you, if you download this, um, you can access my Calendly link and I would love to connect for you and answer any specific questions for your organizations, kind of help you brainstorm through, uh, what your, what your biggest problems are and, and come up with some, some quick hit solutions for you that, you know, when we get off the call, if you do them, you should see some some improvement in terms of your recruitment and hiring results. I absolutely love it. Um, I definitely encourage everybody to check that out because as, as the media will tell you, it's an impossible scenario for a lot of us right now, but it seems like you've really outlined a, a great path for us to all travel. And I appreciate uh, everything you've brought to us and for providing that resource, Danielle. Great. Well, thank you so much. This has been fun. Cheers to going all in.